combinatorics are important for working with probabilities, with exponentials and logarithms. We will look at permutations and factorials, at combinations and at the binomial theorem, and then we will make a first acquaintance with small parameter expansions. How many ways can we arrange four distinct pieces of candy in a row? How many places can we place the first piece of candy, here colored blue? We can place piece number one in the first slot, all the way to the left, in the second slot, in the third slot, or in the fourth slot, all the way to the right. There are four places where we can place the first piece of candy. In each of these cases, the second piece of candy, colored green, can now only be placed in three possible positions. Left, middle, and right. How about piece of candy number three? There remain two unoccupied slots. The yellow piece of candy can be placed in two places. The fourth piece of candy, colored orange, can only be placed in the remaining position. Its location is chosen by default. There are 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 equals 24 ways to arrange 4 distinct pieces of candy in a row. There are 4 places where we can place the first piece of candy, 3 places where we can place the second, 2 places where we can place the third, and 1 place in which we can place the final piece of candy. 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 equals 24 ways to arrange 4 distinct pieces of candy in a row. This kind of product is common in studies of probabilities. It is also cumbersome to write. For both of these reasons, it is convenient to introduce notation. The exclamation mark after a number is read as factorial, and it means to calculate the product of that number, that number minus 1, that number minus 2, and so forth, in steps of 1 until we reach 1. The way these products tend to show up, it is convenient to adopt a convention in which the products are taken out to 0 factorial, and 0 factorial is defined as 1. We have just looked at permutations, the ways in which we can arrange objects in a row if all objects are distinct. But what happens if objects are not all distinct? We'll start by thinking again about distinct objects, and then consider what happens when some objects become indistinguishable. How many patterns can we construct by arranging three different letters and two different numbers? Since A, B, C, 1, and 2 are all distinct, there are 5 factorial, or 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, or 120 ways. There are 5 places to put the letter A, 4 places to put the letter B, 3 places to put the letter C, 2 places to put the number 1, and one place to put the number two. How many patterns can we construct by arranging three identical letters and two identical numbers? Do you think that it's more than 120 ways? Exactly 120 ways? Or fewer than 120 ways? Please pause the video to think. There are fewer than 120 ways. In fact, there are only 10, and they are as follow. The leftmost number could be in any position except for the slot at the right. It could be all the way to the left, leaving four positions that the rightmost number could take. The locations of the letters is thus constrained. If the leftmost number is not in the leftmost slot, maybe it's in the next slot over, leaving three positions that the other number might take. If the leftmost number occupies neither the leftmost slot nor the next slot over, it might be in the middle slot, leaving two positions for the other number to take. The numbers might occupy the two slots farthest to the right. These are the ten ways to arrange three letters and two numbers. Each pattern of shapes, for example here it's square, circle, square, square, circle, corresponds to twelve arrangements that can be distinguished if the letters and numbers themselves are distinct. There are three places to place the letter A while conforming to this shape pattern. There are two remaining places to put the letter B, and one place to put the letter C. 
There are two places to put the number one, uh, here or here, which constrains the final place that the number two can take. Three times two times one times two times one is three factorial times two factorial, which is 12. How many ways can I arrange three letters into the three slots that have blue question marks? There are three factorial, or three times two times one, or six ways. How many ways can I arrange two numbers into the two slots that have golden question marks? There are two factorial, or two times one, or two ways. If the letters A, B, and C were indistinguishable, and the numbers 1 and 2 were also indistinguishable, these 12 patterns would be indistinguishable. So in this sense, they belong to the same family, the family defined by the theme square, circle, square, square, circle. This other theme, square, square, circle, square, circle, corresponds to its own family of 12 patterns. Here's another theme with its own family of 12 patterns, and so forth. The number of families, or themes if we like, multiplied by the number of patterns per family equals the total number of ways to arrange A, B, C, 1, and 2 in a row. Dividing both sides by the number of patterns per family, we say that the total number of patterns divided by the number of patterns per family equals the number of families. In this example, there are 3 plus 2 quantity factorial, that's 120 patterns, of A, B, C, 1, and 2 and 3 factorial times 2 factorial, that's 12 patterns per family. So there are 10 families. More generally, L plus N quantity factorial divided by L factorial N factorial is the number of ways to arrange L indistinguishable letters and N indistinguishable numbers in a row. Why has the word combinations persistently straddled the title bar? because you need to know that that's the keyword you use to search for additional reading on this topic on the internet. It turns out that the quotient L plus N quantity factorial divided by L factorial N factorial is the number of combinations of L things that can be grabbed from L plus N distinguishable objects, and let's see why. Rename slot 1, slot 2, slot 3, and so forth, thing 1, thing 2, thing 3, and so on. Where you previously said the words square or letter, speak the word grabbed. And where you previously said the words circle or number, now speak the word ungrabbed. We might have originally read the example shape pattern at the top as slot 1, square, slot 2, circle, slot 3, square, slot 4, square, and slot 5, circle. But now we say thing 1, grabbed, thing 2, ungrabbed, thing 3, grabbed, thing 4, grabbed and thing 5 ungrabbed. This sequence of words represents one possible outcome of placing L plus N things into a container and then dipping your hand into grab in one swoop L many things while leaving N many things behind. Our declaration that the different letters A, B, C, and so forth are indistinguishable and just as well all regarded simply as square or as letter is equivalent to declaring that we don't care whether we grab thing 1 first and thing 3 second, or grab thing 3 first and thing 1 second. Each distinct combination of L things that could be grabbed in hand, without caring in which order the things are grabbed, corresponds to one pattern of squares and circles in a row. Counting the number of patterns of squares and circles in a row is equivalent to counting the number of combinations of L things that can be grabbed from a container of L plus N distinct things. So, as we claimed, the quotient L plus N quantity factorial divided by L factorial N factorial is the number of combinations of L things that can be grabbed from a container of L plus N distinct things. We required the preceding discussion of combinations so that we could derive the binomial theorem. You know that you can expand the square of x plus y by writing two copies of x plus y and then distributively multiplying each term in the first pair of parentheses with the terms in the other pair of parentheses. The result collapses to x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. The cube of x plus y is the square of x plus y times another factor of x plus y which simplifies to x cubed plus 3x squared y plus 3xy squared plus y cubed. The term x plus y is called a binomial because it contains a sum of a first term, here that's x, and a second term, y. What is the result of taking x plus y to larger powers p?
there are p copies of x plus y. When the first x is multiplied against the second x, and then that product is multiplied against the third x, and so forth, the resulting product is p copies of x. When instead the first y is multiplied against the second x, the third x, and so forth, the resulting product is y times p minus 1 copies of x. If the first x is multiplied against the second y, and then this product is multiplied by the third x, the fourth x, and so forth, we get x times y times p minus 2 copies of x. Notice that y multiplied by p minus 1 copies of x equals x times y times p minus 2 copies of x because multiplication is commutative. Hence, y times p minus 1 x's and x times y times p minus 2 x's are really two copies of the same p minus 1 copies of x times y. If p is large, there may indeed be many such terms to list. Even though we have used the gray ellipses to avoid writing out many products, we are assured that we have explicitly listed all the ways to arrange p copies of x, because there is only one way. We have not necessarily listed all the ways to arrange p minus 1 x's and 1 y. There is only one way to arrange p copies of y. How many copies are there of terms with p minus 1 x's and 1 y? In other words, how many ways are there to arrange p minus 1 x's and 1 y in p slots? Using the formula L plus n quantity factorial over L factorial n factorial from the previous section, we know that there are p minus 1 plus 1 quantity factorial divided by p minus 1 factorial 1 factorial ways to arrange p minus 1 x's and 1 y in a row. The p factorial divided by p minus 1 factorial 1 factorial copies of terms that have p minus 1 x's and 1 copy of y add up to p factorial divided by p minus 1 factorial 1 factorial times x to the p minus 1 power times y. Terms with other mixtures of x's and y's can likewise be collected. All of these terms can then be collected as the sum from k equals 0 to k equals p of p factorial divided by p minus k factorial k factorial times x to the p minus k power times y to the k power. This is the binomial theorem. One of the benefits of writing an expression in the form of a sum is that some terms become obviously negligible during practical application. For the binomial where x is replaced by 1 and y is replaced by the small quantity delta y, use the binomial theorem to show that 1 plus delta y quantity taken to the pth power is approximately 1 plus p times delta y. Use this approximation to calculate 1.1 taken to the fifth power and compare it with the exact answer.